Uh, welcome to this second hour of Happening Now. We are following the investigation into Operation Fast and Furious, the program linked to the death of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. But it's only recently that we uncovered what happened to the agents who blew the whistle, some of them telling Fox News they would faced retaliation since going in public. What exactly did they mean by that? William Lajeunesse is live in Los Angeles with more on this story. William? Well, Jenna, you know, it takes a lot of guts to stand up for what is right in the face of denials and reprisals by your own agency. Now, these guys came forward and revealed what really happened in Fast and Furious, an operation that could still be going on today had they not blown the whistle. Any attempt to retaliate against them for their testimony today would be unfair, unwise, and unlawful. And yet, ATF agents claim that's exactly what happened to the Fast and Furious whistleblowers. They risk everything knowing that everything they've worked for, their careers, their reputations, their finances, are all going to be ruined. Eight agents took their stories up to Capitol Hill. For most, it's been all downhill since. It's just what we were ordered to do, and every time we questioned that order, um, you know, the, there was punitive action. The ATF forced agent John Dodson out of Phoenix, leaving him with a house he can't sell. He now lives in a South Carolina apartment with his two children. Agent Larry Alt says he has unresolved retaliation claims against the agency. Agent Pete Forselli was blackballed by the U.S. Attorney's Office and demoted to a desk job, despite what Washington claims publicly. The Department of Justice will not, would never retaliate against whistleblowers. Meanwhile, none of the executives who oversaw Fast and Furious were fired. Some were promoted. Phoenix Chief Bill Newell, now an assistant in the Office of Management in Washington. Supervisor David Voth, now chief of the Tobacco Division. Former Acting Chief Ken Melson to the Office of Legal Affairs. And Coordinator Bill McMahon, promoted to an Assistant Director of Internal Affairs. These guys are protected. They're enslaved. They're all part of the club. Now, the ATF maintains that no one was promoted, just transferred. So far, the only person to voluntarily resign was the U.S. Attorney in Arizona, Dennis Burke, who we are told is working at Arizona State University in a program funded by the Justice Department. Jenna? You can cover new parts of this story every week, William. Thank you so much for the latest.